Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial for Sci-Fi Ship Controller. In this tutorial I'll be showing you the basics of how to use Sci-Fi Ship Controller to set up a simple ship and configure it for your game. So first we'll start with the basic process of creating a ship. You can do this in one of two ways. The simplest way is to base it off one of our existing prefabs. So in the project hierarchy we navigate to SESM, Sci-Fi Ship Controller, Prefabs and Ships. As you can see, we have a variety of different ship prefabs set up in different configurations. Once you've found one that has somewhat similar behavior to what you'd like to have in your game, you can just drag it into your scene and change the model. So for instance, I might decide that I like this classic hover ship arcade and how it flies like from the demo. So I'll grab that and drag it into my scene and move it up a little bit. Then I could change its model uh, simply if I first deleting the old one, press continue, and then drag this other model in and make sure it's set position wise to zero, zero, zero. Then after I've changed the ship model, I go back to the original model, go into the aero tab and click calculate drag properties. And then you can change a few of the settings to make it be a bit more like you want. So the second way you can do it is you can also create a ship from scratch. So first we have to create a new empty game object in the scene. Do this by clicking create, then clicking create empty. And then I'm going to rename it to cool spaceship. Yep. Then we add the ship control module to it by clicking add component, going down to sci-fi ship controller, then clicking ship control module. So this will automatically add a rigid body component to it. If we want this ship to be a player ship, we will want to go into the rigid body generally and set the interplate setting. And also if it's a player ship, we're also want to, going to want to go add component again and this time we're going to add a player input module so that it can receive input from the player. By default, the player input module is set up to take input directly from the keyboard. Uh, finally, we'll want to add our own ship model. So like before, we go down to our ship model, click on it and drag it in under the game object. You can see now that the object is kind of underneath the ground, so we'll drag it back up again. Um, and again, oops, sorry, you need to make sure you're dragging the ship object. As I said before, you're going to need to make sure that the ship model is centered, otherwise some things are not going to work. Um, again, just go back into the Aero tab and click Calculate Drag Properties. So now that we've created our ship, we can start configuring it. So one of the first things you should do when creating a ship is set the mass of the ship, as this will significantly impact how the ship flies. You can set the mass of the ship using this value here. So I'm just going to leave it the default as it should work fine for this ship. It's important to note that you should only change this value in the ship control module. Changing the mass value in the rigid body isn't going to work. We can also change the center of mass of the rigid body if needed by enabling this value set COM manually. But for now, we're just gonna leave the center of mass at its default position. The next important thing to do when configuring a ship is decide which physics model our ship is going to use, which is this value here. Currently, there are two physics models in sci-fi ship controller, the physics-based mode and the arcade mode. In physics-based mode, all ship movement is achieved through the use of physics, physically based inputs. Turning the ship requires either a thruster offset from the center of mass or a control surface such as an aileron or a rudder. In arcade mode, external forces are used to turn the ship, making ship setup easier. In addition, more options are available for different ship behaviors, for instance, to allow the ship's velocity to change direction much more quickly than it would be physically able to. In general, it's recommended for most ships that you use the arcade mode, as it is more intuitive to use and can be configured to suit most use cases. 
The main exception to this is if you are creating a game that aims to simulate realistic flight mechanics, in which case you may want to try the physics based mode. For this tutorial, I'll purely be covering the arcade mode setup. Next, we'll want to go into the thrusters tab up here. By default, when you create a new ship, a single forward thruster here is configured automatically. You can see this thruster represented by the pink arrow in the scene view. To demonstrate how to use the thrusters tab, I'll show you an example of adding a liftoff thruster. First, we need to add a new thruster to the list by clicking the plus button. It's generally a good idea to name your thrusters so you remember what they are. So I'll just go ahead and name this one uh, liftoff thruster. Apart from the name, there are four parameters we can change. So first there's the max thrust, then thrust direction, thrust input, and the effects object. The max thrust determines how powerful the thruster is, while the thrust direction determines which direction the thruster pushes the ship in. For a liftoff thruster, it needs to be able to overcome the weight of the ship, so I'm going to set it to 55 kilonewtons. Next, since this thruster needs to push the ship upwards, I'm going to change the thrust direction to upwards as well by setting this vector field to 0, 1, 0. Notice that the pink arrow changes direction in the inspector as well. Uh, you can also change the thrust direction by selecting the thrust in the scene and using the rotation tool. The direction of the arrow in the scene shows which way the propellant would come out of the thruster or which way the particles from a particle system would come out. In other words, it faces in the opposite direction of the force from the thruster. We also can control which input activates this thruster with the thrust input parameter. Right now, for this liftoff thruster, it's set to backward thrust. This means that when input is sent to the ship asking it to give backward thrust, this thruster will be activated. But this isn't what we want for this thruster. We want it to activate when upwards input is received by the ship. So we can fix this by changing the thrust input to upward thrust. But the easier way to do this is to click the auto populate forces and moments button at the bottom. This calculates what the thruster input for all of your thrusters should be at once based on which direction they are facing in. So a good workflow is to set the max thrust and directions of all your thrusters and then click the auto populate forces and moments button to set up all of your inputs. The final thing we can do to our thrusters in arcade mode is add effects to them. Currently we support particle systems and audio sources. To add these effects, I'm going to go down here and drag in this prefab I have, and I'm going to add it as a child to the ship. You will need to have one of these objects for each thruster that you want to add effects to. Any sounds and particle systems can be added as children to this object or on the actual parent. So as you can see on the top level of the object, I've got an audio source and then I've got a number of particle systems added as children. All of that will be fine. So let me go back to the object. So now that I've added this object as a child to the ship, I can go back to the forward thruster and then I can drag in this object into the effect object slot, which will link it with that thruster. So now when the forward thruster is activated, the effects will be as well. So now that we've finished with our thrusters, we can start configuring the turning characteristics of our ship. To do this, we need to go back to the physics tab. The first properties we want to tweak are down here, and they're the pitch, roll, and your accelerations. These values determine how quickly the ship rotates in response to input on that axis. For instance, if we increased the roll acceleration here in the middle, when we sent input to roll the ship to the left, it would roll more quickly to the left. Another value that we'll want to tweak is the flight turn acceleration here. Generally, when you rotate a spaceship using the controls, it doesn't immediately change the direction it is moving in. Kind of similar to how when you turn a shopping trolley, often it will simply continue moving in the same direction. This shopping trolley-like behavior is what you will get when flight turn acceleration is set to zero. 
Increasing flight turn acceleration will allow more arcade style flight behavior where the ship dir changes direction more quickly. The last thing we'll be doing to change the turning characteristics can be found in the control tab. Here you can see the rotational flight assist, which helps make flying easier by slowing down spinning motions when input is released on that axis. You can tweak how powerful the assist is by changing the strength value here. Setting it to zero disables the assist entirely. With thrusters and turning done, the last thing we're going to be covering in this tutorial is braking. This can be implemented using thrusters, but more often than not, you'll want to implement it in a way more similar to air brakes. In arcade mode, this is achieved through the brake component, which can be found at the bottom of the aero tab. By default, it will be enabled, this use brake component value here. The key values you can tweak here are brake strength and min acceleration. Brake strength determines how powerful the brake is, while min acceleration is a value that determines how quickly the ship comes to a stop at low speeds. If the ship doesn't come to a stop quickly enough, you can increase it, and if the ship comes to a stop too quickly, you can decrease it. Those are the basics of ship setup in Sci-Fi Ship Controller. To conclude this tutorial, I'll show you how to quickly set up a camera to follow the ship. The easiest way to set up a camera to follow the ship is to use the player camera prefab that comes with Sci-Fi Ship Controller. So again, we go to SESM, Sci-Fi Ship Controller, Prefabs, Environment, and click the player camera prefab and drag it into the scene. Then we grab the ship that we've created and drag it into the target ship slot of the player camera. Now the camera will follow the ship. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions about Sci-Fi Ship Controller, you can contact us in our forum or on our Discord channel. That's it, and thank you for watching.